Hi, my name is Randy Shear, and I'm a technical curriculum developer here at Jitterbit. Today, we're going to jump into a tutorial that is part of our Jitterbit Basic series that shows you how to quickly connect your data systems using the Jitterbit Harmony platform. In this tutorial, I'm going to use the Jitterbit Harmony Cloud Studio to show you how to quickly configure the Workday connector and create a very basic operation using that connection. To begin, I'm going to log into the Jitterbit Harmony Cloud Studio and create a new project. After doing that, we are here on this screen that says create new project for Jitterbit. Now I need to name my project. It's always best to consult your organization when you're naming your projects. And also name it something very descriptive so you know what it is later on. I'm going to name this Workday to FTP tutorial. And I'm going to select my environment. This description field is an optional field. Best practice is to add a description that allows you to add information about what is going on around the project, which can be helpful for not only yourself, but for anyone else who needs to work on this project. For this one, I'm going to leave it blank and quit and click start designing. I'm taken here to Cloud Studio, and you can see over here on the left, this is my project pane. And in the middle is the design canvas, and over here on the right is the component palette. I'm going to first start off in my component palette because I'm looking for the Workday connector, and I can either scroll through all of these icons and look for the Workday, or I can quickly just go up here to the search and start typing in the connector I want. In this case, it's Workday. And notice that all of the other icons go away and Workday is left right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Workday connector so that I can configure this connector. Notice that you need the Workday host, the tenant, the username, and the password. So uh, these are going to be specific to your organization. All right, now that I've entered in all my information, let me click test. And you'll notice that the connection is a success so I can click save changes and I am greeted with another screen over here in the component palette that has a lot more icons these are all of the activities that you can use with workday and for this particular activity I'm going to do today I am going to use the get activity and I'm going to drag it over here and notice it just plops right in there I'll let go and we're ready. Also, immediately when it's ready to, to go, you can see that I can type in something. So I, get is already there. And I'm gonna call this get HR workers, because that's what we're going to do. And I'll hit enter. And then up here, uh, I've, again, I need to add a very descriptive title for what this entire operation sequence will do. And I'm gonna name this workday to FTP and hit enter and you'll see that all of those are now there ready to go. The first step is to go ahead and configure this activity. So I'm going to double click on it and you'll notice that there's a lot of different um, objects I can choose from. Uh, I can either again scroll through this whole list or I can simply come to this search bar over here and I'm going to look for the human resource um, object. So let's click that in there and notice that all of the others go away and leave human resource. So I've selected human resource and I'm going to click next. Again, I'm greeted with some more objects. Again, I can search or I mean, I can scroll up and down or I can search. So this time I'm going to look for workers. And notice that um, three have shown up in my search results for workers. And I'm going to want this middle one, get workers. And then do you want it to continue on air? Yes. And finally, we are presented with the data schema for both sides, the request and the response. For this particular activity, we are going to configure a request because we want to 
uh, get rid of all of our inactive users. And then we will also then configure the response side. So let's click finish and get to configuring our request side. So we're gonna move over here. Notice that this plus symbol shows up. So we're gonna click here and click new transformation. And in this particular one, we're going to name it request um, get HR workers because we're going to request that. And one of our main things that we're going to do is, um, is we see that we have this transformation side over here and we're looking for, I need to configure the inactive workers. So um, I'm going to look for inactive workers. Ex there it is, exclude inactive workers. And I want to add in a new script. And in here, I'm going to click um, true. I want it to exclude the inactive workers. All right, and then we can go back and we'll notice that there is now a, um, a script here on the side. And then I'm gonna say return to workflow. And now that get, uh, the request for get uh, HR workers is here. Time to see what our response is going to be. We need to get a response from that. And so we're gonna click in and, and click new transformation. Again, we need to name this, and this time we're gonna we're gonna type in response get hr workers. And for our schema over here, we're going to define and we're gonna create a flat. We just simply want the names, the emails, and hire date and user ID of our workers. And uh, to do that, we're simply going to click add field and we're going to name this one. Oops, let's try that again. We're gonna name this user ID because this is where the user ID is going to be input. And we're gonna click add field. And on this one, it's going to be email, add field. On this one, I'm gonna type in first name and then we're going to add a field again. And this one is going to be last name. And finally, add field again. And this one is going to be higher dates. Now I want you to notice that some of these are coming in red and some are black. The red means that it is an invalid file name. So remember, the file names cannot have a space between the two names. So pay special careful attention to that, that you do not put in a space and notice that they all go to black. Um, that is a very important thing to remember. So I see that my flat scheme is over here and it shows me what it looks like. When, you, when you're satisfied with the different categories that you have, simply click Save Changes. Once you have the information the way you like it, now it's time to connect from the left-hand side over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to scroll down and begin to pull out the information. So response data, we have worker. If I open up worker, we have worker um, data. If I open up worker data, we begin to see the user ID. So I'm going to connect that one here. And then I also see personal data. And within personal data, you'll see here's the, the name data. And then I see the legal name data and the name detail data. And here's where I'm gonna find my first name and my last name for this, for the people I'm, I'm looking for. Um, and then I can, you know, make that smaller 
And then the last thing, or one of the last things I'm looking for is email and hire date. So as I scroll down, I will see contact information. And then the contact information is email address data. And I see my email address right here. So scroll that and move that up there to email address. And then finally, what I need is the hire date for each of our employees that we're looking for. So I see employment data right here. And I see worker status data and hire date right here. So I'll just click quickly drag that over. As you can see, um, each of these fields has now populated with the information that they need. And I'm gonna click continue to workflow. There we go. So now we have, we're getting rid of the inactive workers. We're pulling data from our workday and we're going to get a response. Now we need a place to put that response. Um, and so to do that, we're gonna use our, our FTP to do that. So here is FTP right here. I'm gonna double click and I'm going to configure my FTP. Again, you'll configure your FTP with the information from your organization. And I'm going to put in the information from mine. After I put in my password, I'm gonna come down here and click test. And I see that my connection is a success. So I'm gonna click save changes. Now I get two options, read and write. So I'm gonna take my write and add it to our sequence here and let go. And again, it gives me the option to go ahead and name it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna name this write request get HR workers. And I'm gonna hit enter. And then I'm gonna go ahead and configure this so that we can get our HR worker data that we wanted. So we're going to, we got the name in there, our path. The file name we're going to use for this is workday underscore results underscore. And then we're going to use um, some variables. We're going to use date and then we're going to do underscore and we're going to do time dot csv so that it opens up in a, in a spreadsheet and then we're going to click next we're going to click finish and that is our sequence so we are have we have inactive users that we don't want and workday is going to um, bring those workers over and it's going to give us a response and then jitterbit is going to take that response and send it to our ftp so there's three three dots here. If we click those three dots, we can deploy and run. Now in the background, what's happening is Jitterbit is going and requesting all this information. Uh, we see here that it's received, and then it's also going to then um, compile all that information, put in a CSV file, and send it to our FTP. So uh, all along the way, you can see here that it's running. First it said received, now it's running, and then finally it's going to say success. So now if we jump over to our, our training SFTP and we have our username and password there, if we log in, we shall see that at the bottom is the information that we requested. And as you can see, it's, re it's right here on the date that we uh, requested this information and it opens up here at the bottom. So let's take a look. And here it is, the user ID, the um, email that we wanted, first name, last name, as well as the date that they were employed. For deeper training opportunities, please check out our learning platform, Jitterbit University. You can access this at university.jitterbit.com. You will need an enrollment key to access the training content 
and you can get that information from your customer success or alliance manager.